What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna be talking about why some products die and what you could do to avoid that or what to do if that happens to you. Okay, so definitely in this video, I will be telling some of my personal stories about products that have gone downhill uh, and also just what you can even do to help that. But first, I really need to make sure you understand my overall philosophy about products. And it really is not to be relying on one particular product because that is a risky position to be in because you shouldn't just assume that you're gonna strike one thing and it's just gonna be consistent absolutely forever. So ultimately, the best thing you can ever do is to be expanding, adding more products, and that is the only way to achieve sustainability, predictability, and overall just having a business that you can rely on. So your goal shouldn't always be to just uh, have this one product that you can protect and expand and keep going, it should be that you need to be continuously figuring out new areas that you can expand into because it is a risk to be relying on one product absolutely very long term. So just wanna get that out of the way. Most of you guys already know that is my philosophy, but that is a broken way of even thinking about it. You, It's okay if one product has a lifespan if over the course of the next one, two, three years, you've built out 10, 20, 30 products, then you'll be in a much better position to absorb the loss of one product. So rather than just having one product and trying to focus on protecting it forever, the best thing you can do to protect your business is to really expand so you're not gonna be relying only on that single one product. So just wanna make sure you understand that overarching sort of philosophy uh, that you should have in this business and now let's talk more about actually like why a product could go downhill uh, and some things that you can do if that happens because you shouldn't just give up immediately of course there are things you can absolutely do to try to save it and push it further uh, but yeah just you know that is my overall thing more products more diversification so that you're not just relying on a single one so one of the biggest reasons that a product might die and probably the one that you are most worried about is what if my product gets saturated? What if I get a ton more competitors that are now coming into my niche and launching products that are similar to mine? Maybe they're even better than mine. Uh, what am I gonna do because I'm drowning? There was one competitor and now there are 20 competitors. And I think this even is a problem in your product selection more than necessarily what's happening now. Most likely if you're finding yourself in that situation, you might have chose a product that is too trendy or short term or something that just seemed very of the moment and an opportunity right now, rather than finding something that is steady and something that could be built out into a brand and more long term. So I've said before, I think it's very, very risky if when you're choosing a product, you are thinking in your head that I have to launch now or else I'm screwed. You should be able to think, will this still be an opportunity in six weeks or 12 weeks or whatever time frame? Because if you are just finding these short term sort of like time arbitrage opportunities, then of course other people are going to be doing the exact same thing that you're doing. So I like to find something that is a little bit more stable and not so hot and so trendy because then I just know what it is. There's already competition. I'm not saying there can't be any competition and it's just an unsexy product. Maybe there's already competition, but I'm just happy with that landscape and I know that I can play with the level of competition that is already there. Uh, they are already determined whether or not the landscape of this product looks successful because I can see how many competitors there are can I fit into this so I feel like that is one of the biggest mistakes that leads to people being very concerned about something going massively saturated because they're getting into something that is a trendy product something that is not at all matured I'm not saying it has to be matured over years and years and it can't be at all sort of an emerging trend but if it's just some super new crazy thing that's wide open and just popped up on Jungle Scout, you know, you have to realize that there are gonna be hundreds of other people looking at that same thing. So uh, that might be a mistake just even beforehand, just in your product selection, which you can think about on your next product if you find yourself in that situation. So if you find yourself in that situation where you've been doing well, but now you're seeing a ton of 
competitors pop up. I think one of the biggest mistakes that sellers make is they stop doing everything that worked for them. Like there's this huge desire that people seem to want to like go hard on pay-per-click advertising and marketing and all of this stuff at the beginning. And then they just wanna stick in the search results and just coast forever. And that is a very bad method. You need to be, you need to continue doing everything that got you to where you are. So don't just think because you're having success that now you can just turn everything off and coast. You should do more of what's working or at least just keep doing what's working because whatever got you there is going to allow you to stick there. So never try to tune your PPC down too much. That can be a separate video about how to actually think about tuning your PPC, which you should do, but don't just try to whittle it down so far to zero to save money because you're just going to slow down everything and ultimately lose and lose and lose traction, especially if you're coupling that with more competitors popping in. Now you're just making your situation even harder. You're just gonna continue dripping down the rank. So you ha actually have to push harder in this situation, maybe go extra hard on marketing for a few weeks. Uh, maybe that means losing some money or breaking even instead of making a little bit of profit, but you're doing that, it's just like a launch. You're doing that so that you can solidify your placement and sell more or later because you are now you now have that traction you have that momentum it's all about momentum so you cannot let your momentum die and if it, it does die now we need to do everything we possibly can to boost that momentum which means more advertising whether that's some type of promotion or just going harder on all of your standard ads but what you really don't want to be doing is to think oh everything is not going very well right now now i want to scale back even more because that could make your situation even potentially harder so make sure you're not scaling everything back so much and actually going to just make your traction even lower which is just going to make your rankings even worse which is going to make your traction lower again also, don't be too afraid of more competition because that always is going to happen. There's always going to be more and more people that are jumping into whatever niche you are in, but also don't forget, the longer you've been selling, the more momentum and sales history you have, which is really going to solidify your ranks. Uh, that is one of the key things in just ranking in general on Amazon is the longer you, that you have a lot of sales history, that is just going to solidify your position even more and you're gonna have more reviews over time. So that's something I, I wanna talk about more, something that I've even been thinking about more is like the longer you have this built up, the more valuable that little piece of real estate that you've built yourself on Amazon really is worth because Truthfully, even though there is still a ton of opportunity on Amazon, the longer this goes on, the more that it will mature and potentially be harder in a few years from now compared to now. I still think it'll be possible even in forever, probably. It's just as, as any sort of business opportunity matures, you have to be better. So if you're not first, you have to be better. So I'm about to hop on a YouTube live. So um, if you've been missing those and watching the replays and you wanna actually get your question answered, make sure that you hit the bell next to the subscribe. Hit the subscribe, of course, if you haven't as well. But with the bell, you'll get notified when I go live so you can come in, get your questions answered. All right, so this should be cool. And then back to the vlog. What's up, guys? Welcome to another Ask Matt. <laughs> Okay, so the live was awesome. Uh, definitely go back and check that replay if you were not in there live. And back to the topic, I would say the good thing about Amazon is that most of the time, once you have things rolling and everything is going good, if you keep doing what you're doing and you keep pushing, you don't get complacent the way I was saying, then a lot of the times things just continue to go and sometimes even get more strong over time as you solidify your positioning. But if you are just always trying to tone it down, then you're risking losing that momentum. And just keep in mind, momentum is really going to be the key. So if you do that, hopefully you don't even find yourself in the position of losing momentum and having that downward spiral until you're um, in a position where your listing might be kind of dead and need this uh, resuscitating. So if you do find yourself in that situation, then I would just say you need to do more of what you already know that you have to do. You need to push, you need to advertise, you need to market, you need to do some promotions, you need to treat it as if it were a brand new product again and give it that attention that you were giving it in the beginning. Also, what's really good is that it's pretty much impossible, I wouldn't say impossible, but it's unlikely and it's rare that a product goes from really good to literally being worth cutting out. Most likely, if it's going to dive, it's just going to lose its 
steak as its most important product to you, but it's not gonna go to a position where you literally have to probably stop selling it. It might just drop down. At the very worst, the good thing about Amazon businesses in general is that it's pretty hard to straight up lose money or at least lose all of your money. Like worst case scenario is it drops down to break even, you sell through your inventory, maybe it goes really well in Christmas and you still make a lot of profit uh, You know, one month out of the year and that's not a total loss, it's not a huge win, but the good thing is that even the failures can be not that bad. So it's really unlikely to have to full on cut a product. The only times that I've done that were really based off of poor product choice. Uh, I've talked about those in my mistake videos. It was really just product choice. Once was going into a product that was not proven, I was taking a risk. I knew that it was risk reward, took a bigger risk, it didn't work out. Another time was me trying to jump on what I would say was kind of an open trend, which as you guys know, that's something that I say not to do. And I did that and so did a hundred other sellers in a matter of the first week or two that mine got in as well. So that one just never even got traction from the beginning. So it doesn't really apply to what I'm talking about here, which is what happens if a good listing starts tanking. Really the key here is just momentum. You gotta keep your momentum up always. So don't slack off, don't get complacent, don't, be, don't get comfortable. Uh, and don't get comfortable with even just one product because that is really the only way to grow this. You gotta look at new opportunities, even me. This is what I'm doing. You know, I'm right there with you guys. Like this is what I'm doing right now as I'm in my business. There are some products that do well, some that don't. Uh, I am not about having a home run on every single product. I'm about building out a portfolio. Some do better than I expect. A lot do what I expect. Some don't do well at all and that's totally okay and that's why I'm always looking for more opportunities and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm looking for more products, uh, maybe even some new brands. So hopefully you'll hear me uh, talking about some new stuff like that that I'm doing. But just so you know, like I'm applying the same thing uh, in my own business. I don't just get content and just try to go on defense and try to protect what I already have because you know, some will have their lifespan and I just want to diversify and add more products so that I have even more just leverage and even more protection in my business. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Uh, as far as being a vlog, this was really just me walking around my apartment in circles today. Uh, but hopefully you guys appreciated the content. I hope it was really valuable to a lot of you. I will just give a quick reminder, um, for those of you that do wanna get into the course that just launched, it is $100 off for this launch week. So if you're going to do it, you might as well uh, get in on that deal while you can. So that closes Sunday night at midnight Pacific time. So if you were gonna get into it, would be a good time to take advantage of the deal while you can. So if you are interested in that, there are links to everything in the description. Subscribe, like, thumbs up, do all of that and check out that link in the description. So I'll see you in the next one. What do you have to say? Okay, follow me on Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, all that. Twitter, <laughs> damn, oh, plug in Twitter. We've never done that. Ding, 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 Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> um, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Why out of everywhere? This is where you choose to be. <laughs>